I'd like to talk a little about the importance of eating your food uncooked. Now, unfortunately, uh, you probably are aware that over 90% of the food that is purchased by Americans are processed foods. And when you're selecting and choosing these types of foods, it's no surprise they have an epidemic of chronic degenerative diseases. This is exactly what you'd expect. So ideally, you'd want to have unprocessed foods, typically organically, biodynamically, and locally harvested foods. But even if you chose those foods, the challenge is that it, if you cook them, you can destroy most of the nutrition in there. And uh, I believe that it's really wise to, str to strive to have as much raw food in your, in your diet. And I personally try to uh, get about 85% of my food being raw. And why? Well, there's a number of reasons. Uh, one of the primary ones is uh, due to what's called biophotons. And that's a term you may not have heard of before, but in Europe, specifically in Germany, there's a lot of research around this area. And that typically is energy that's, or photons that are transferred from the sun into biological forms. And plants are one of the primary ways that these biophotons are stored. And when you eat a, a raw vegetable or a plant, you're going to transfer many of these biophotons. And when you uh, heated, however, many of these biophotons are destroyed, so the energy transfer is limited. But certainly one of the other ways that you can do this is, or, or the d other damages that can occur by heating food is that you damage the enzymes. And enzymes are proteins. They are catalysts that help speed up and facilitate uh, reactions in your body. And they can speed it up to as many as a million times or more. In fact, some of these reactions will never even occur if enzymes, essentially will never occur if enzymes aren't present. Um, so they, uh, you have over 1,300 of them, and one of the ways that you can help stimulate the production of enzymes in your body is simply by chewing. Now, I know you've heard that many times, but it's, it's true. And when you chew your food, there's actually a signal that goes from your brain into your stomach that tells your stomach to increase the production of the enzymes. And interestingly, on a side note, that's one of the reasons why you don't want to chew gum. That's one of the primary reasons, because you're sending a false signal to your body and your body's starting to make up these enzymes when you don't need them. So you're wasting your enzyme production. And this is a challenge because what we found as people age, and especially in our, in our culture that's focusing on processed foods, about one third of your body's ability to produce enzymes is lost by the age of 40. So um, many people as they age find that they benefit from enzyme supplementation. And we actually have a form, a nutritional typing form on our site where we guide and mentor people in, as they adopt these nutritional typing principles. And what we found in that form and in our clinic that many people do benefit from these enzymes. And uh, it came to our attention that uh, there, there are many different options of, of enzymes to select from. So what we decided to do is produce what we believe is one of the highest quality enzymes out there. And we believe it, it's high quality because it has a, a, a number of different uh, combinations that are just not present in most other enzymes. It has both uh, protein splitting enzymes uh, from uh, pa uh, papaya, we have papain, and uh, from uh, uh, pineapple, bromelain, but we also have an enzyme to help uh, reduce, uh, help you di your body digest uh, starches and sugars and the carbohydrates, and that's amylase. And many people, of course, have problems digesting beans when they get gas from that. And as a result of that, uh, there, this enzyme specifically is alpha-galactosidase, and this, this enzyme preparation that we've developed has that in there. And then lastly, it has ox bile, which is particularly useful for helping people digest fat. So especially if you're having problems with gallbladders or you have, even had your gallbladder removed. So um, ideally, of course, it's going to be best to consume your foods uh, raw as much as possible. And if you aren't doing that already, you want to gradually increase the amount until you don't have any symptoms. Uh, and then as high as you can possibly go because that's going to help your body uh, produce more enzymes. And of course, as I mentioned, to make sure that you're chewing your food and not chewing gum. So these are simple strategies that you and your family can adopt to help yourselves take control of your health.